Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to another installment of KSO Today on February the 6th, 2020. Today, I'll spend most of my time sharing some thoughts from yesterday's football media availability, which consisted of a number of mid-year enrollees being made available to us. I do want to thank our sponsors real quick first. Those are, of course, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance, as well as Tallgrass Tap House, where we will be recording a full-length version of the KSO show tonight, starting at 7 o'clock with at KSU underscore fan. And, of course, Flando will be there with us, too. Come see us. If you would like to, of course, well, I just love seeing people out there and talking to them there at Tallgrass. Uh, like I said, today I'm just going to really talk about what I was able to learn or at least experience with yesterday's media av- availability, which consisted of a number of mid-year enrollees. I do want to, I guess, apologize for one and then note that I didn't get Sam Shields. I actually got him for like five or ten seconds. My recording was poor, and then I did move to talk to uh, to Will Howard, too. Um, so yeah, Sam Shields, I apologize for that. I do have a video of, of Sam Shields from our time talking to Salina on the site. So I, I put that in the thread as well. So you could still he, still hear from him because I wish I would have got that. It was uh, just me there yesterday. Flando was out of town and I'm making excuses now. That's what it is. But we do have videos up from uh, Christian Moore, Will Howard, Carver Willis, Will Swanson, T. Denson, and D. Marquise Hayes. Um, and none of those kids I had never talked to before. So I was happy to get to do that. Um, I think the only one I really had talked to before that I had to think about it was probably Will Swanson in Omaha, maybe Carver Willis briefly. Yeah, so a lot of those kids were new experiences for me too, of course. So I'm just going to go down the line and just share what thoughts come to mind when I mention those kids. Uh, the last one I put up was this morning, and that was Demarcus Hayes. My immediate thoughts was, you know, seeing pictures and reading about linebacker, and I knew he was a linebacker slash nickel, but I always thought linebacker. Seeing him in person and talking a little bit, I start to think maybe he is more of a nickel. Uh, he said he weighed 190 pounds. He's not huge. Um, he's probably six foot, six one. Uh, m- maybe, maybe he's six one. And if he ends up being six one, 210, 215 pounds down the line, he could play a more of a hybrid role. That's a combination of you know nickel linebacker, maybe even a safety. You see so many teams use, and I think he has a future there. But I think he is probably going to be a tweener in those two spots. Where I thought, ah, oh, this kid's probably a linebacker until I met him. Now I see his body type talk to him and think I can see that that tweener role more. And that could be a great thing. Um, moving on to T. Denson, uh, right before we started recording, um, you know, we had a group of not a huge group, but probably seven to ten people walk up to him, which is a lot for a for a young man. But he was startled by it and muttered, not a curse word. He just said the you know, JC. I won't say it either because I know that could be offensive to some, but and, and kind of laughed at himself because he was startled by the amount of attention he got right away. But then he handled the interview, of course, really, really well. He looks very physically put together. Uh, He looks like a guy from a body type that I think could play college football next year. And I think K-State thinks the same. I'm not trying to raise the expectations of him. He will have a lot to learn. He has a long ways to go, of course, like anybody else. But K-State wanted him desperately. They believe he can play early. You can tell he has a lot of confidence. He's physically put together. We'll see if he's a good enough player or not. But um, I think he'll be good. Will Swanson, I only talked to for about a minute. Um, Again, because we've got... Fortunately, 10 or 15 minutes up on our site over the course of the last year, Will Swanson interviews from us going to Omaha to talk to him. Um, he's, great. he's great, though. Another guy, I think, looks pretty physically put together. We thought that when we saw him, you know, I don't know how many months ago it was, but back in uh, September, I guess, when we went to uh, around Lincoln to watch him play. Um, he still looks like a guy who I, too, think has a real, real chance to play as a true freshman at tight end. I'd be surprised if he doesn't. I think it'll just be a little bit. I don't expect him to come in and start or beat out guys, um, but I think he's got a good mentor in Nick Leonard's. He's got a good build already. He's uh, a very heady kid. I was excited to see him again and look forward to that. I, I think maybe, I don't know, to start of me kind of was Carver Willis. And I expected him to be good, but I didn't expect him to be great. And and I wrote this on the message board, and I'm not trying to put unfair pressure on another kid, but I could not help but think of Dalton Reisner, um, this young guy from Colorado who I thought was very polished and very well-spoken. Uh, I really liked him. I thought he was really, really good. Uh, he's a guy who talks about wanting, you know, being most comfortable at left tackle is all he's really played, but he'll play anywhere. I thought he had some of the most unselfish quotes. It seemed very sincere. He said at one point, hey, if I need to be a scout team player for three years and it makes this team better, I'll do that. And it felt real from him. I thought Carver Willis uh, 
came off like a leader to me in that session. And I think he's going to be a big, big part of the program for the next, you know, three, four, five years, wherever that ends up being. Uh, Christian Moore said he checks it out 6'2", 6'3", 235 or so right now, which is really is pretty good size. And he said the same thing. But I think what he, the staff wants him to do is make that a good 235. Like anybody, he admits he's got some bad weight on there. Not very much. You look at the kid, you think he looks great. He's obviously a Division one athlete. Um, but I think he needs to, you know, physically change his body a little bit to play early. He thinks as an H-back, he is a pretty even split between, you know, a tight end and a fullback. I asked if there's one of those sides that he kind of, Oh, felt more comfortable at, but he thought he was right in the middle, which is great because as you watched with last year with K-State, those guys are so interchangeable. A guy like Nick Leonard's really did play all those spots extensively, and I think they believe that Christian Moore can be somebody like that too. Last but certainly not least, a lot of us got our first chance to meet Will Howard, another very, very impressive uh, young man. Um, he is a full 6'4", uh, for sure. He's pretty he's pretty lean. I mean, there's not probably a ton of muscle on his frame, to be quite honest with you right now. I think he said he weighed around 215, 220. He looked to me, and I would have believed, I'm sure he was telling the truth, but the way he carries his weight, I would have believed that he was 6'4", 200, or 195. He's pretty thin, um, but he's got a great frame. He's going to be a big kid. K-State hopes someday he can play around 235. I believe he's you know got the frame to do it. I just think it'll take him some time looking at him. Comparing his body type to like Jake Rubles, who we saw a couple of weeks ago, I think Will Howard might be slightly taller, um, but Rubles looks broader and thicker already. So it's going to be interesting to compare those two for the next you know significant period of time. But you know Will Howard, I, I praise Carver Willis a ton. Will Howard was probably just as good. You go back and watch him speak. I have about ten minutes of him on on the YouTube page. Uh, he was very polished, very ready. I'm, you know, very excited to be at Kansas State, and I think he believes he's a great fit for what K State's going to do on offense. All of these guys want to play early. They're all going to try to play early. I'd be really surprised if Will Howard does. Of course, you've got Skylar Thompson back at, at you know, the starter. He's locked in there. Nick Ost was the number two essentially the whole season last year. Sometimes splitting with John Holcomb, but he was, you know, the number two for the most part. And then you've got Jaron Lewis, who's got a year ahead of of uh, Will Howard in the system. So doesn't mean Howard couldn't win the backup job. It's absolutely possible to have every chance to, but I guess it would surprise me. We'll see. We'll see what happens, though. I think he's a capable young man, and I think he's going to have a great career at K State, and people are going to love hearing from him. Uh, we will be heading to Ames this weekend to watch K-State take on Iowa State in a game that Bruce Weber, you know, never used the term must win. Uh, he didn't use the term must win, but he basically did, you know, after the loss to uh, Baylor, talk about having to go get a road win at Iowa State this weekend, and I think they do. If K-State wants to have a chance of turning the season around, and whatever turning the season around, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's NIT hopes at this point, but they would need to go win a road game like this at Iowa State and then do it again a few more times. But we'll be there in Ames, myself and Derek and Flanders are all going to go. We're also going to meet with 2021 committed athlete Jaden Williams in West Des Moines, Iowa. So I appreciate Derek for coordinating that. We hope to have some video for you from that. It may be it may be Sunday or Monday. I'm not sure exactly when that will get finished up. We will see him this weekend and have that for you. And we have a basketball made of media availability this afternoon around 2.30. So Flanders or I or both of us should have some coverage up from that as well. Getting you ready for that trip to Iowa State for K-State's Big 12 matchup against the Cyclones in Ames. That's really it for me today. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed KSO today, and I really hope you enjoy your Thursday.